الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in Surah Yasin chapter 36 verse 12 this continuation of last last Friday بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا نحن نحي الموت ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين Indeed, it is we who bring the dead to life and record what they have put forth and what they have left behind. And all things we have enumerated in a clear register. Now, all creation must die. That's, that's an indisputable fact. Everything other than Allah Taala has a lifespan, has a beginning and, a, and an end. And Allah's perfect justice requires that He brings the dead back to life for accounting. Because, then, you know, in this life, you can see somebody who was rich, abused people, and died. And you may ask, where is the justice? Well, justice will be served on the day of judgment. So that's why there has to be a day of judgment. This is one of the proofs. If you believe that Allah is fair, you have to believe that there is a day of judgment where everybody gets their fair, you know, what, what's you know, what's coming to them. You have to get justice. And Allah Taala shows us that He brings things to life every year. You look at it, when you go through winter, everything is dead. And then spring comes, everything comes, comes back to life. You can have a desert, and then it rains on it, comes back to life. Allah shows it to us every year, so we know for certain that there is life after death. Death is not the end of things. Death is just another stage, an end of one stage and beginning of another. So the act of recording, wanaktubu, writing, in our mind it may sound like, like some, something on a paper, like a pen and a paper. But naktubu, the act of writing in the Quran, the higher meaning of it is permanency. When you have something that's verbal versus something that's written, Whatever is written is more like if you go to court. Oh, somebody promised me this. It's totally different than if you have a piece of paper that's signed and says, no, this is written, you know, it's mine. So the act of writing is for permanency. That nothing's going to be, for, you know, forgotten. And Allah, wa you know, we don't know what this book looked like, what this record. But Allah described it in the Quran with many names. One of them is Kitab al-Marqum. It's an enumerated book. It has, every page has a number. Every act has maybe a picture, a video evidence. We don't know what it is, but it is indisputable. It's complete and indisputable, and the pages are numbered, so no page can be taken out or no page can be added. The, the, the record is perfect, you know, as the angels are, are recording it. So every infraction that we do, every action that we do is recorded. But al along with it is the intention. What was your intention? What did you intend to do? Is, the act is not by itself, is not, not everything that's recorded. What were you intending? Because sometimes you intend something bad and something good out of it, and now you're, you're kind of patting yourself on the back, I did something good. No, Allah knows the intention. Allah knows what you intended to do, knows the action, and knows the results of that action. And all that stuff is documented in an undisputable fact. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ And all things we have enumerated in a clear register. So the deeds and the results of those deeds are enumerated in this record. They're completely recorded and cannot be disputed. And the word أَحْصَى, enumerated, is a, it's about an intimate and full knowledge of the act and its consequences. That's what, you know, adda is to count. But ahsa is, is much higher than that. It's knowing a lot more detail about something. So we don't know what this record looks like, but it will leave nothing but will record it and it will be presented on the Day of Judgment for accounting. It will be replayed with utmost accuracy. In Surah Al-Isra, in chapter 17 and verse 14, Allah says, اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا. 
on the day of judgment, it will be said to every person, read your record, sufficient is yourself against you this day as accountant. You will be your own witness. Nobody's gonna come up and says, you did this. You're gonna be your own witness from this record. And it will be undisputable. You cannot, Allah's justice silences people. When you cross the red light and the camera is taking video of you in your car crossing the red light, what are you going to say? Here's the evidence. You, you be the judge. What, you know, is this right or wrong? We can't say anything. The evidence is indisputable. Allah's record is much more advanced than that. So this, in this life, that video of you crossing the red light is enough to, to make you quiet. You know, just you get your checkbook, you write your ticket, and, and you send it, whether you like it or not. You can grumble if you want, but you're your own witness. You cannot dispute it. So the evidence is overwhelming and indisputable in this record. So, وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَأَثَارَهُمْ And we write what they have put forward. Every action that we do, we were putting it forward for accounting on the day of judgment. So what have we prepared to defend those actions on the day of judgment? What answer will we give Allah Taala when he asks us, I gave you a long lifespan. What did you do with it? I gave you 80 years, 90 years, 60, whatever that number is. What did you do with, your, with those years? I gave you strength and the mean to earn an income. How did you earn your income and what did you spend it on? These are questions that we have to prepare answers now because they will be asked. I gave you knowledge, Allah will tell you. I gave you knowledge. I gave you a brain to, so you can see things and acquire this knowledge. What did you do with it? Did you just bottle it in and, and you know, put the books on the shelf and not do it? Or did you take it and spread it to others and benefit others with that knowledge. You know, when Allah gives us health and wealth and a, you know, a family and a house and all this stuff, what are, what, did we, what are we doing with it? We have to prepare an answer for Allah because He will ask. So this, everything that we do, we're sending it to the, to the hereafter in this record so we can, we'll have to answer for it. So there are going to be so many questions that we need to prepare these answers for. So every action and inaction, not just action, and inaction. Because sometimes Allah will ask you, I gave you eloquence. Why did you remain quiet when somebody was being attacked? You, that inaction is also, you have, we have to answer for. Action and inaction. When... Poor people ask you, donate, help us, and you have the wealth and you have the means and you withhold. Why did you withhold? Do you have a reason? If you have a compelling reason, great. But Allah Taala is the judge whether that reason is valid or not. So action and inaction has to be answered for. But one word in this verse that should give us pause. وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ and what they have left behind. The ramifications of those actions. The action is not the end of the story. You can do something, and the ramifications of it could last hundreds of years. And Allah is just, He's not gonna only judge you based on that action, but also the fallout of that action. And this should give us pause before we do anything to think long and hard about that action and what consequences that come out from that action. The Prophet ﷺ had hadith around, around this, you know, this topic that says whoever starts a good practice will have, and, and people follow him, he will have a share of their reward as they mimic him and, and do it. The converse is also true. If you start a bad practice and people adopt it, they get the sin and you get a copy of their sin added to your record as well. And if you do something really bad and it lasts for generations, I mean that, that bad action or good action is the action that keeps on giving. 
and we have to make sure that if we do something, the, the ramifications of it is good, not bad. If you are a leader, or you're a teacher, or you're a father, or you're in a position of responsibility, you have to think about what you do, because people look up to you. As a father, your children will look up to you. If you teach them bad habits, they're going to think that's normal, and then they'll teach it to their kids, and then they'll teach it to their kids, and you'll have generation after generation being ruined, and you're the one who started it, and all of their sins are in your, in your record. So we, when you are in a, person, in a position of responsibility, we have to be very careful what we do, what we say, because people will mimic. If you corrupt one person, you know, you, you ruin his aqidah, his, 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 you know, his creed. You teach him something from the religion that's not true. And this be, person becomes a teacher and teaches for 30 years. And every year he has 20, 30 students. How many people did he influence, badly influence? Maybe not all of them, but a lot. You know, over those 30 years and those people will maybe ruin other people and other, I mean, it's, it's just, a, it's a pyramid. It's a pyramid scheme. If that pyramid is built on good, you reap all the benefits from everything under that pyramid. But if you do something bad, you reap all the, you know, all the, the bad actions from that pyramid. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us the best way to act. All of our deeds, all of our prayers, all of our good deeds are in his record. Because we mimicked him. So that's an example of a good you know, you know, good actions that last way beyond your lifespan. And that's, that's, those are the actions we need to focus on. Because Allah Ta'ala is clear. We write what they do and the ramifications of their actions. So if you raise a great child, and this child becomes a scholar... And then he teaches others and teaches others and more scholars come out from that, from that lineage. What a great, you know, what a great action that you'll be proud of on the day of judgment. You know, you show up and all of a sudden there are, you know, maybe 200,000 from, from that line. All good people and all of their, every good thing that they've done is in your record. And everything in your record is from the, the good person who raised you. That these are, I mean, if you start thinking about it, it blows your mind. But conversely, you don't care about your children. You let them do whatever you want. They, raise, they grow up to be bad. And bad children raise bad children and bad children one generation after one generation after one generation. That's a disaster. You don't have the sin of just ruining one, you know, one child or, or a couple of children. You could have hundreds of thousands of people because of you failing to do your job, or you did a bad thing and they mimicked you, now you get a share of all of their bad deeds. So we have to be very careful not to start a new trend, a new bad trend. You have a good trend, go for it. Bad trends, no. Because it is so dangerous. Because you don't have to worry about only the deed that you did, but you have to worry about everybody else who's going to mimic you and do the same thing. And now you get a share of their, of their sin. Because having a sin is not bad enough. Now you get a bunch of stuff piled on top of it. You don't, want to, you don't want that. So we have to strive for good deeds that last beyond our lifetime. And these deeds have to be for the sake of Allah. If we want the reward in the hereafter, we have to do it for Allah's sake. You do it to please somebody else... Allah will tell you, go, go to that somebody and, and get your reward from them. We have to make sure that the deeds are good, they're done for Allah's sake, and their impact as big as possible. Build a masjid. Build a school. Build an orphanage. Build, you know, educate, educate children. You know, give them good education. There are so many venues that you can have sadaqah jariya. You know, these actions that are perpetual actions. They're there. I mean, all, all we have to do is look for them and go for it. That's what we have to focus on is what are we saving for our hereafter. 
Don't just worry about how am I going to go to work and, and, and get the lunch and get the dinner. We have to look way beyond our life. We have to look past our lifetime to what are we sending forth and what impact are we going to leave behind so when we leave, people will miss us. And maybe not miss us because we have people that come after us that followed through and picked up, you know, picked up the, the load. So we have to focus on these deeds because everything is recorded. And even if people don't know and don't recognize you for it, sufficient is for you that Allah Taala has recorded it and he will reward you for it. You don't care if people know or not, but you want Allah to know that you did it for his, for his sake and for this particular purpose of having this perpetual action that the gift that keeps on giving.